Hey guys and girls, just waiting for a live to go here everywhere. We've got lives. Facebook's got us. Instagram's got us. How are we all guys? Hopefully you are having an awesome Tuesday. Uh, what a great time to be alive. Um, you know, here we are seeing the biggest budget and the collapse of our financial system as, uh, you know, as we see it. So it's, uh, it's quite fun, it's exciting. I'm so excited to be alive and uh, excited to be sharing this with you guys as we go through some interesting times and uh, witnessing you know, some sort of um, you know, cool changes happening out there in the marketplace. So we just saw the budget get handed down from Scamo and his friends, uh, Josh Frydenberg and, uh, and Mr. Scamo himself. So, it's uh, I'm seeing here uh, best budget ever, and uh, I'd have to admit it is a fantastic budget. And a lot of people may still be watching. I'm seeing that we've got a bit of low numbers here, but uh, you know, tonight I want to talk about what's happening out there in the financial markets. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what I've been watching with the budget as it unfolded this evening. Uh, have a bit of an open discussion with you guys. If you've got any questions, feel free to throw them in the, uh, the question box there or flick a text message over to the hotline that I have here on this phone. And um, yeah, happy to answer those questions. We'll be doing a live on Thursday. I'll be bringing Ridwan Hannan from One Path Accountants uh, to the office to ask him his take uh, from that and his views and his thoughts on how that would transpire. And I'll give you some more further views and thoughts of myself from myself uh, when that transpires. So yeah, getting straight into it. I've got some good news articles here for us this week. Uh, for those of you that are uh, not on Birchfeed yet, uh, go to birchfeed.com, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you guys are on Birchfeed and you're in, enjoying it, uh, maybe share in the comments what you what you like about it and uh, maybe even leave us a review on, uh, on, on, on Google as a review as to what you like about Birchfeed. So um, I wanted to go to one news article to talk about negative interest rates. So elephant in the room, uh, we had the RBA rate cut decision today and they said no rate cut uh, for this month, no deal. It uh, doesn't mean that the money machine ain't going and, uh, and, and printing. Uh, they are printing lots and lots of money. So I'll run through that this evening. Uh, there's an article here from Reuters or Reuters or whatever you want to call it. BOE, Bank of England, uh, says evidence on negative rates is encouraging. London, uh, the Bank of England's investigation into whether negative interest rates might help the British economy through its current downturn has found encouraging evidence. Policymaker, whatever her name is, said in an interview published on late Saturday, uh, said that the Sunday Telegraph that she did not expect Britain to continue to enjoy a fast V shape of recovery due to headwinds. Um, what's happened to my screen here? Uh, due to headwinds from the local flare-ups in the uh, corona, uh, rising unemployment and very weak global um, global um, thing. I've got some people here. If everyone can stay off their phone because the screen's wobbling. I don't know why. Is it slow? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I thought the phone behind the screen maybe. Um, I've got some, got some friends here to show you all tonight as well. Um, so here we are looking at the Bank of England. They're talking about uh, negative interest rates and it is encouraging. Right? Why is every bank around the world talking about negative interest rates? Um, here is an article that I was watching the other day from mybusiness.com.au. PM announces $800 million budget plan to help businesses go digital. Uh, that's irrelevant now because he just gave $1 trillion worth of deficit uh, here in the, uh, the, the, the handout this evening. Um, here's another article from the Daily Mail, and whilst we never believe anything from the Daily Mail because they're basically scammers over there, my opinion, uh, all the articles are very interesting sort of uh, articles that they do. Uh, this article goes to read on the huge cha the huge change coming to how you claim your government benefits. Aussies will now use new $250 million facial recognition. Uh, to access services. It goes on to read, uh, new facial recognition technology will be used to access Centrelink payments. It will also be used to enrol to vote, register drones and declare bankruptcy. Uh, PM Scott Morrow at Scamo 
uh, wants to make it safer and easier to use government services. The 250 million facial recognition upgrade is a part of the 800 million dollar package. So that goes on from the article we were reading beforehand or going to read. So now uh, let's just review what's been happening recently. Uh, in 2020, they've been able to get all of your DNA. You don't even put that thing up your nose or whatever you do to go, you get yourself a test. They've got your testing, they've got your DNA. Now they've got you, to give you free money, uh, you have to have this facial recognition. Basically, they own you, right? So if you are thinking that this is fantastic, um, you know, for intents and purposes, it may be, but what are you doing with this opportunity? Uh, because rest assured, uh, from my perspective, I will not be getting any microchip. I will not be getting this thing done to me where they put it in here. Um, and I won't be wearing a mask. I made a post on Facebook the other day saying, I'm not paid as a crisis actor, so I'll not be uh, partaking in the in the events that they are you know, portraying out there. But it's just interesting now they've got, you know, mass scale DNA and now they've got mass scale um, you know, tracking and tracing uh, for those of you if you want to take a, 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 you know, advantage of their, their party where they give away free money. Uh, next article that I have here, it is from The Independent, uh, Generation by Boris Johnson's. Uh, it looks like the guy from Dumb and Dumber. Anyone ever realise that? <laughs> that Boris Johnson guy? We've got Jemmy here from the UK and she's laughing, right? We've literally, you've got you know, the guy from America that's... A, Apparently got COVID and he's uh, he's sitting there and he's like oh I'm you know gonna um, go to go to hospital and I'm gonna, I've got this this, this disease and uh, now he's suddenly out um, and then you got the guy that, from Dumb and Dumber in the UK and he's running the country and they all well, they all were a script I love seeing and I posted a bit of about this in Birchfield I love seeing when they're putting out all these photos and these press releases it's so nice it, like, I've never seen an office desk look like the ones they did. It looks like a fucking stage, like when you're trying to film a, a perfect angle of a milk carton for a display purpose or an advertising or promotion outlet. That's what all these things look like, right? They're all just paid actors. But anyway, this one's pretty fun. Boris Johnson, uh, Dumber Dumber, uh, signals relaxation of mortgage rules to allow first-time buyers onto the housing ladder. Regulations introduced in the wake of the 2008 crash to take risk out of the financial system could be reversed to help young people onto the housing ladder, Prime Minister Dumber Dumber has indicated. He has also asked the ministers to work up plans to allow more mortgages to be offered with a 5% deposit to help would-be homeowners who are currently locked out of the market by the demand for deposits of 15 to 20% of the property's value. So here we are, we've got Scamo here, we've got all our relaxation of our policies which got announced last week we've got dumb and dumber over there uh, in the uk giving away you know free money it's just a world of wash of free money right so when people say that we are in a bubble the property market's in a bubble property market isn't in a bubble it is the whole financial system that is in a bubble and uh you know there's it, it a benefit to uh, that occurring I just realize that the screen keeps making weird things tonight and buzzing on it so apologies to you sort of viewing that but it's, uh, it's just interesting right because I remember being caught up in the media once in my life right I remember when the media uh, loved watching articles from Nathan going look here's this guy with 25 property 25 years old 25 properties 200 properties all that sort of stuff they loved having me a poster child but when I stepped out and I said to someone hey look this is the system that we're in <laughs> they didn't want to hear that story right so um, here we are with a whole new sort of uh, round of this market spruiking. We will see the property market rise. Uh, I would personally love to see the market crash. Uh, a lot of people think I'm a property spruiker, but um, I would personally love to see the market crash. I wouldn't be losing as many deals as what I do in the market, and it would be much easier to pick up cheap stock. But with all these incentives that are happening out there, and this isn't just a, an Australian thing, this is a global thing, it's certainly not happening. Um, but I remember when I was in the news and they always used to say, oh, you know, it's negative gearing, it's liberal, it's labor, it's whatever crime minister that we want to put in and whatever, you know, criminal that we're going to have represent you, um, you can go blame them. But the minute that I said, look, it's the, the monetary system, it's the central banks, uh, it's the policy makers, um, you know, suddenly there were some ugly articles that they started to print out there, and, you know, whatnot. So um, looking at 
this market, uh, I'm looking at the market beforehand, I remember seeing house prices in Kenya unaffordable, house prices in the Philippines unaffordable, house prices in the UK unaffordable, house prices in New Zealand unaffordable, house prices in the US unaffordable, house prices in Canada unaffordable. And these things rang a bell throughout every country around the world. And that wasn't due by fact, that wasn't due by you know, chance, that was due to monetary policy. And then we start to see property prices crashing all around the world. And then we start to see plastic straws getting banned around the world. And now we're seeing this disease uh, around the world. Now we're seeing money printing around the world. And now we're starting to see all these lending laws change in the UK, Australia, doesn't matter which country. So it's just interesting, interesting observation from one side of the coin. I just want to say that Dumb and Dumber uh, wanted to create a generation buy of young people uh, engaged to enga enable to engage in the world of capitalism by investing their, in their home. The PM was accused of selling pipe dreams by housing charity Shelter, which pointed out that even a 95% mortgage will be beyond many people's range at a time when the average house price is eight times their average salary in England. Well, they always leave out, they go, oh, you know, the wages only got up by this, but the house price has gone up by that. I'm sick and tired of hearing these articles. I'm sick and tired of playing in these stories and, you know, in these articles and being in them myself either. So the reality of it is, is that the lower that they reduce those interest rates, the more enslaved in debt people can become and the more we can inflate their asset prices. And that's reality what it is. But this is a banker's game. We're all a part of their chessboard. And I feel that we're in probably the potential, the biggest boom uh, of our lifetimes occurring over the course of the next decade. And that's what's really exciting because I often sit there and think, you know, I did tell everyone when I was 30, I'd be a billionaire by the age of 40. I probably don't have to do anything. The monetary system will just implode on itself and all my loans become worthless and I can pay them off with useless dollars at the end of that. So this here is just interesting that last week I was fortunate enough to bring to you an article saying we're relaxing all our laws here in Australia and this week I'm sitting here with the uh, ability to say that Mr Dumb and Dumber from over in the UK is doing the same thing, which is just odd, right? One week out, they're all, you know, doing the same thing. So um, just uh, saw this article this morning, uh, used car prices soar as commuters shun the public transport over the unsaid virus fears. Um, used car prices continue to soar as commuters shun public transport, fearing that um, the contagion. Uh, according to data analytics firm, whatever it want to be, uh, used motor vehicle prices rose by 4.4% last week after increasing by 2.1% in the previous week, and the stock remains considerably low. In terms of category prices, SUVs uh, rose most up by 5.4%, while passenger vehicles gained 4.7%. How come these car prices are rising so high? Yeah, why is everything else racing so high? Just makes me go to think. Yeah, I just put an article into Birch Feed only a, a matter of like 10 minutes before hopping on here with a little clip it, which is the first thing I got to see from the budget, which um, which goes on to read. I'll actually show you uh, that the, the CPI, so inflation rate, is negative 0.3. So it's saying that we are in a deflationary period at the moment. If we're in deflation right now, I'd hate to fucking think what it's going to look like when we see 1.34%, uh, one and three quarters of a percent of inflation, right? What will we be seeing in prices at that point? It'll be really fun. may not be fun for the savers out there that have got lots of cash sorted away because they will be losing the purchasing value of their, of their currency. Um, here's just a little tweet uh, from our friend. You know, we've seen Dumb and Dumber it looks like his brother, you know, like Donald Trump. I will be leaving the great Walter Reed Medical Facility today at 6.30 p.m. Feeling really good. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, don't let it dominate your life. We've developed under the Trump administration some really great drugs and knowledge. I feel better than I did 20 years ago, right? <laughs> Everyone at the table's love here, right? What? This is like some shit from King, Kim Jong-un, right? I remember people going, oh, you know, that little Kim bloke, he was not so little, but little Kim, he's such a bad guy and he's doing bad things and all this sort of stuff. 
And I was like, it's all just a game. It's all just an act. The day that you know, Trump went over there, installed Hollywood in, tried to invade the country, do a deal, suddenly he's the best guy in the world. He doesn't have nuclear weapons anymore. And we forgot all about him. Um, but you know, if you look at the propaganda that he had in his people, how they perceived him, how they thought of him, um, it's very much similar to all of those pro uh, liberal people that are writing on Scamo's Facebook page, you're the best Prime Minister, Prime Minister of Australia, uh, all the people that are writing on the bottom of every video, get well soon Trump, you're our man, you're the best guy ever. You know, I thought you were going to build a wall, I didn't realise you are going to invade Palestine again, right? <laughs> I didn't realise you were doing certain deals with having an orb ball and, um, you know, facing walls and all different stuff. But anyway, it uh, just goes on. It's, it's interesting to see the, the actors that we have and uh, who really does control those actors? Anyway, on to our very own budget here in Australia. Uh, you'll get to meet Jeremy soon. He's uh, he's going to be fun, Jeremy. We hope. Yeah, we hope, we hope, we hope. You'll come over shortly. Um, so for our own budget, a few things that I acknowledged. Uh, $872 billion worth of debt. It's okay. We're in a recession. We need to sort it out. It's a global financial depression, I guess, which is what we called two years ago here, three years ago at Be Invested. But apparently Nathan was off his head back in the day. I just always love saying that. So, but yeah, it's um, global financial depression uh, caused via the COVIDs. Uh, that's my new little word for it. It's a scamdemic. Uh, they're mopping the floor with it. It's very clear when we, uh, when we look at this date here, which was back in October 2018, when we started to see our bond yields just fall off a cliff, right? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? I don't know, because the economy was screwed. And uh, here we are with the repercussions of it. But we had to print $1.1 $1 trillion worth of debt. The biggest amount of debt that your country's ever been in. But it's okay, right? We're creating jobs, jobs all around. Everybody gets a job. It's the greatest thing ever. I'm actually really excited for when I get a chance to go home and I can read through the budget because I'm excited to see what's in there, right? Because I'm sure that there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunity for all of us that are watching. And I guess it's what you take of it, right? Never let a good crisis go to waste. And these politicians certainly are not um, allowing it to go to a waste. And uh, $1.1 billion. And we've got 3.5 million people in Australia on JobKeeper and JobSeeker. How many million of people were already on the dole? How many people were already on some sort of pension? How many million people, guys? We are sitting here in a state where we've got about 50% of our community on communism. Right? You think that our world is real? It's not, right? But, you know, we can see the hands that are being played. We can see the, the chess hands that are in the pawns that are being moved around the chess field. And that, I guess, is the opportunity of we can take advantage of, you know, what's happening out there uh, in the market. So, um, of course, it's all about that. Um, there's some other things that I saw. Um, they're apparently making a job maker. I remember back in the day uh, when I put my mask on and made a funny video before everyone thought masks were cool. Uh, I put the mask on and uh, and um, it said that they'd make a job maker, right? When we finish with job seeker, job keeper, they'll make a job maker and they'll pay people to take people on to get them off their balance sheet and back onto the private sector. So take them from the public sector balance sheet to the private sector. And um, yeah, so basically $800 a month uh, if you employ a person under 30 um, and they work for 20 hours a week. So I wonder how many people will be getting sacked next week and put back on someone else's books. It's, uh, it's amazing. But anyway, um, write off of any assets. Um, so if you're a business and you've got $5 million uh, or less in turnover, you can instantly write off an asset of any size, which is very interesting. I uh, wonder if we could push some properties through that, right? It would be fun to see what office expenses we can find. Um, and then, um, yeah, just seen here, the government wants to get businesses spending. The government will offer temporary full expensing to businesses to encourage them in, to invest. Effectively, businesses that make new investments will be able to write off the entire cost in one year. Wow, uh, wow, imagine what sort of fun we can have with that, folks. Uh, we can write off the whole the cost of whatever. I'm hoping it's a property. I'm hoping we can push a property through there. It'll be fun. 
the scheme will be uh, available instantly to all businesses with a turnover of less than five billion in each year. I thought it was five billion. It's five billion. Uh, over 99% of businesses will be able to write off the full value of any any eligible asset they purchase for their business. Frydenberg said. So on that note, um, I'm about to uh, introduce you to some very important people. Um, I'm going to run through also. Um, so I'm going to leave this a bit of an opportunity for all of you guys that want to send a, um, a message through. If you have got a thought, a question, or seen something that's risen in value this week, you can send it through to my special little phone here. Uh, the phone number being 0426 887 564. So it's 0426 887 564. So uh, if you have a question that you'd like me to look at, if you've got uh, something that's interesting with um, with the um, sort of current climate or whatever, flick it through. I'll have a look at it and read through. I've got a lot of your questions and that. I'll keep all your messages uh, to open up very shortly. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you guys uh, some people that are very important in the business that help our investors uh, sort of make wealth and, and, and guide them and shepherd them to um, you know, to, to their, their end goals. So uh, on that note, I'm going to bring over Jeremy. Jeremy, They've welcome been, you to the... have been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. You've been waiting for it? There yes. we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, yes, so we've got two cameras here, Jeremy. Oh, you here <laughs> so, um, Jeremy? Yes. Who, what am I written? Who am I? I've got some questions here for you. Right. So, yeah. Okay. With it, um, yeah, we've got some questions. I've got you to ask me some questions. Jeremy, tell me, tell me a bit about you. Where are you from? I'm from the eastern suburbs and I'm now living in the western suburbs and I'm really yeah. grateful about that. I love it out here. Yeah. I love this giant concentration camp at the tax office <laughs> we call Western Sydney. <laughs> and I love the fact we live in this country. I think Australia's days are only going to get better and better as the entire global financial system crashes. It's amazing. Um, yeah, and, and the best thing is the fact we've got, what, population of a Los Angeles base and living on the landmass the size of the United States. And um, we all live in a few little cities up and down the east coast of Australia <laughs> and we're about to decentralise. <laughs> this is great news. <laughs> Everyone thought that was fun. Right? No. We've got Jeremy here. <laughs> this is the man. <laughs> this is the man. Um, so what else so have we got here? What's Jeremy, what's the, what's the best thing about working here? You've been, you. how, how, long, how long have you been here for? I've been here like two and a half, two and a half years. Two and a half years, is that all? Yeah, that's all. It feels like I've been here for a lot I'll longer. I've been here a lot longer. No, 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 two and a half years. I've been here for like four years or something, yeah, wow. No, no, no. 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 And I've got to say, it doesn't feel like four years. It's gone like that. Yeah. But times have changed. It doesn't feel like four years because it's <laughs> no. two and a half years. <laughs> <It's> but. <laughs> no, but mostly when you're working at a job, it feels like you've been at a job a lot longer. Yeah. Than, um, what it actually is, but you know, I've seen the growth of this company. You know, when we first started out here, things were a bit slow. The banks were being really, they weren't throwing a trillion dollars <laughs> out the window. So that's actually, sure. that's that's really that's really interesting, Jeremy, because like for two and a half years ago, three years ago, that was a time when the market was much more different than what it is today. Like, because that's when APRA came in. Things were a bit tighter. Tightened are, everything in the banks. That made you've never it. seen a market like this? I have never seen anything like this <laughs> in my life. Me either. <laughs> this is one of the best times I have ever seen. I think this financial disaster or what, the crash, is only going to be the best thing that ever happened for all Australians. And he's been, he's been living for a long time, you, Jeremy. So. Oh, I know, I've been living. I feel like I've been here since the turn of last century, not this century. You almost have. <laughs> yeah, virtually speaking, the Edwardian era. Bring it back. Um, what's your, your biggest win of recent times? I think the biggest win of recent times would have to be bring the, all the clients through, uh, and with everybody else's help, and especially Nathan's um, on botany. That yeah. that deal was just absolutely Can you tell us a little bit about botany? Like, what so botany was a deal that we did, like, what, two, two months ago or something? Two months ago, it, we, we closed on the 31st of August, 2020. Yep. And it had been going for six months. We've been trying to close this deal for the January, long. January. I bought the deal to the table yeah. in January. Six units, one well, complex. Yes. Two, three one bedroom, two two bedroom units. So four four two bedders. Four two bedders. And two, two one bedders. Okay. Yeah. That was that was something like that. In <laughs> in botany. And because of were banks and stuff, people couldn't get their finance or their 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 um, pre approval ran out, they had to go again and it was just a very complicated procedure because they all had to close at the one time. Mm -hmm. But they did. 
And then I think what was it two days later, the one bedroom units were valued at five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. What did we pay for it? Four hundred and ninety. Four ten. Four ten. <laughs> Four ninety was the other deal that we're doing. That is the <laughs> Without mentioning where that one is. Well, yeah. we can't say where that one is, but it's east of George Street, that's for sure. Um, and then the two bedroom <laughs> units. <laughs> the two bedroom units were well, they were five hundred and ten, weren't they? We paid five thirty five. Five thirty five and then we're valued at seven hundred. So basically they made over a hundred thousand dollars within forty eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I reckon that was a... We print more reckon, money here. We're printing more money than the Fed can keep up with. And the Fed beautiful. Are, yeah, beautiful. Really? Beautiful moments. Cool. That was really cool. And then what, what are some of like... So there's some of our most recent sort of stories that we've been able to yes. help people. Uh, what like so some of those investors like what happened after they pulled out their equity? Like what did they go on to do? Like They went and bought another property. They could bring, Just one or...? Well, a couple of them have just done one, but a few of them have done several properties since then. It's only been a month. Yeah, true. But, you know, they've have done... I mean, we've got one guy, you know, what is he, 21 years old, who has is on, like, 90K, had yeah. one property, and September no, last he's, year... No, he's, he's about 26, I think. He's about 26. No, no, I think he's younger than that, isn't he? No, I think he's 26. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, whatever happened, whatever happened... He thinks just because he looks young, everyone's young. Everyone's young. Yeah. Everybody's young. <laughs> Uh, and so, but literally in a year, he's bought five properties. Cool. Which I think is a very all he all he got to do is say yes, and the rest <laughs> is easy. The rest is just gravy. It's only it's only easy because the people that are you're only as good as the team that you've got around you. And only I as guess good the, as the team you've got around you. I'm blessed that, that we've is got good people here, and they've so. got good, and and good leadership and mentorship, Matt, Nathan. Thank that you. That is the most important thing of all. Thank what you. I have learned in the last four years defeats anything for the last twenty. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two and a half years. Cool. And um, and how do you reckon the scamdemic's been and how can it help that word? I can't say the word, the, the C word with the number on it. How, how's that? COVID-1984. <laughs> <laughs> that one? <laughs> that one, yeah. How, how's that helped investors? Oh, it's the best thing that's could have ever happened to an investor, I think. Yeah? Um, Why? Well, because they immediately want to go into, they immediately, fear sets in. And they want to know what they can do that has solid returns and they immediately reach for tangible assets yeah. because they suddenly realise that everything could collapse. Yeah. Banks could take absolutely everything that belongs in the bank, but what they can't take because property is nine-tenths of the law, it is nine-tenths of common law, it is the foundation of the Westminster system of justice and therefore the more property you have, the more rights you have and the more freedom you have. And this is it, since 12... We're 1216 at the signing of the Magna Carta. This has been the case for Western civilization, but they keep that as a big we're secret. wealthy knowledge. If mm. we had a Jeremy feed, that'd be going off all night. I don't know about whether it'd be going off all night. I think people would be watching, you know, the Bachelorette before long. Or... <laughs> so flight to safety, you've been seeing people. Flight to safety, just straight into bricks and mortar, and cool. we've got a deficit of housing. So the more bricks and mortar you have, the better it's going to be. And there's all stimulus packages. I just saw one other thing in the budget that they gave away uh, another 10,000 deposits to first homeowners so they've given away the 10,000 first homeowner deposits to start of the year we can put down to so back in the old days right I'll ask you this Jeremy the old <laughs> days. Um, how would someone buy a house back in the old days they'd have to work hard save a 50% deposit go buy a property down and and then sp and then you'd have to you know come up with a deposit for your ten thousand dollar place in grain stains yeah. and work for the next 40 years paying it off yeah, that's what it was like and then then they got the the, the two working families so you've got a mum and a dad that are working yes. now yeah they organized that well didn't they like, sure the state the recession though yes. every every recession they just print more money out mm -hmm. but they make people more indoctrinated they make it more owned by the states yes well they want your kids to be raised by the states and mum and dad are out there working and and they yeah. re and they produce you know 50 more percent more tax now they're right. just giving the deposits to everybody oh it's okay you can't afford the deposit we'll just give you the deposit you can pay us back maybe hopefully sometime in the future 
and it needs to spend more money to be able to cover the losses yeah, that they're making that money. money. Yeah. A colour photocopier does fantastic things. Well, they didn't have to. Back in the old days, you'd have to like melt, melt a coin down, split it from a fifty from a hundred percent purity mm-hmm. down to a half purity, and there's printed lots of notes. Now they just go, oh well, wow, it's, it's budget time again. Let's uh, let's enter in a budget here, and oh boom, there we go. <laughs> We just got some more money. Here's another one point two trillion dollars, yeah. and that's without incorpor- That's without reporting the fraction reserve banking on top of that. So imagine if they use that trillion dollars that they just printed and use that as a ten percent of one tenth. They can print out another. They can, that's what they will do. That. That's, that's what, what they, they will do. They so it'd be another that. ten trillion dollars worth of circulating <laughs> money. They just keep adding the do- notes all the way along, yeah, moving well. the dot left and moving the the, the, the notes further to the right. Go. What's going to happen, Jeremy? Tell us, what are your thoughts? What's going to happen in 2021? 21. I think it's going to be the best year ever for Australia. (laughs) I truly do. I think America's going to implode. I hope Trump gets back in. I just love him so much. Yeah. I shouldn't. I love. Him. Well, who's yeah. funnier? Does that have you ever seen anyone funny? Oh, the seen old old guy Biden. Like, uh, 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 uh. well, we know he's grab like someone. Like, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> grab him by the hand. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's funny. That's what makes you've got to be funny as a politician. That's yeah. that's the number one thing. Be I reckon you could be a politician, Jeremy. Yeah. You're a funny really? guy. But don't you have to lie? <laughs> continue worry about telling the oh, truth yeah, and reveal. The thing with Jeremy. Over the two and a half years that he's been here, is that this guy just says things very candidly as they are. So yeah, yeah try to try <laughs> say it as it is. <laughs> that from him. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Keep being awesome. You keep, keep being awesome. Muchas gracias for this great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. I got to bring Pat in. All right. We have young Patrick here. Howdy. Thanks Tough for... act to follow. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Jeremy, geez. I feel like I've been showing up here on, on, on Facebook. Yeah, wow. So, um, Pat, like, well, thanks for coming back into the office. Like, so everyone, he was here, like, Pat's here late and everyone else is here late. And, um, but today I just wanted to share with everyone my investor relation uh, team and my investor relation managers. A couple of my team couldn't be here because uh, sick and unwell and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, got a got only a few of us here, but Pat had to go home. He's got children, got newborn. And, I do, yeah. I do. Yeah. I still haven't seen her yet. You got to bring her in. I'll bring day. her in. I'll bring yeah. her in one day. But uh, my lovely wife is taking care of her. Yeah. So it's all taken care of. <laughs> so we've got Pat, who's a family guy. Yeah. If you want to tell us a bit about who you are and. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, look, long story short, I guess uh, if we go back to about 2013, I, I was actually a B-invested client. So that I is ca- correct. Yeah, so, so I remember coming in for the MAP session. Um, me and my wife came in and we had the MAP session. And then from there, you know, fast forward the next few years, we, we traveled, we were traveling the world, playing music and doing all the things that we love. Um, and then came back, started a family and... I saw the job going. Yeah, and, and you, so I thought you're a musician too. Yeah. 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 So so by trade. Um, it's not all about that one. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So by trade, a, a musician. But um, yeah, when we when we got back and built the family, uh, had to get a real job. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I saw saw the call out for for some work at Be Invested and thought, why not? Throw my hat in the ring. Cool. And what 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 made you come to the business to Be Invested? It's just uh, it's just an alignment with, with you know what you talk about and and uh, the strategy behind uh, inv- investing in property. I've always been interested in property and uh, you know I always love helping people along the way with whatever their goals are. So um, yeah, that's what I always try and do anyway. So to yeah, be cool. you know alongside the team and helping people out, it's it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. And you, you do like I love how your your care and nurture with all our investors like you, you spend a lot of time you know with, with people that are just starting out and people that are you know quite advanced in their their portfolio so you know it seems to be really really good with our investors cool. Happy to help. apart from um jeremy little show that we just had <laughs> <laughs> um what's been your most interesting moment since you've been here Ah, oh, for me is uh, seeing the the ups and downs that the the, the turmoil, which which might be uh, accepting a property and then a client going through the rigmarole of of f- securing finance or uh, providing the right documents or simply saying yes to a property, yeah, uh, or on the flip side saying no to a property and then two weeks later, seeing that it's worth 
hundred and fifty thousand dollars more than uh, cool. you know what we offered it to them. So, you know, for me, it's 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 there's there's something new that happens every day. There's there's always interesting things that are that are happening within the market within our client base. Yeah. Um, so to, to to I suppose put it down to one thing is is quite difficult, but. Yeah, for me, it's just the, the, the day in, day out process yeah. of it all. And, yeah. uh, and helping people through the whole process, uh, talking to them about building pest reports or helping them get their, get their finance or advise yeah. them about why a property is good. Yeah. Um, sometimes they don't see it on face value. Uh, but that's what I love. I always it. love when we can take someone that's like their mindset's over in one reality, yep. and then we can show them a new reality and then align them and they get to be able to live life on their terms, which is which yep. is cool. And if they say no sometimes on a deal. So, so Pat works and, and the team that I've got here this evening and my team which work closely with our investors to help them sort of build their portfolios. Um, like when sometimes when a deal doesn't go through or whatever, like today we had 11 properties that we yeah. lost um, from the weekend, like people were paying more and over asking prices and all that sort of stuff. Um, um, cool, just saw a nice message there. Patrick seems like he fits in well. Thanks Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it's cool. And um, what's the, 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 the biggest bottleneck that um, that you observe in people that you talk to on a daily basis and, yep. and help out? Yeah, uh, it's indecision. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when there's something presented, when there's a deal, an opportunity presented, mm -hmm. it's indecision. It's, if someone is to say no, that's not for me, that's fine. If someone says yes, happy yeah. days. Yeah. But it's that in between where, where it's, there's, there's, a, there's a lack of action, a lack of you know, taking action on a decision, yeah. which is always the bottleneck. Um, you know, Nathan being, I suppose, the mentor for, for anyone who comes on board as a client, mm -hmm. it's almost like you look at any good coach, any good football coach, sometimes they're gonna tell you things that you may not agree with uh, to begin with, but it's always for the greater good. It's like mm -hmm. Mr. Miyagi getting Daniel to, you know, wax on, wax, wax off, off the, yeah. the, the, the car, but he, he, he called Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he would have never thought, how's this gonna help me with karate, but yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's the indecision that, that stops people from succeeding. That's that's the big thing. They say the richest place in the world is the cemetery because people take their dreams and they die with them. Yeah. And um, and you know, he who hesitates usually does make silly decisions. And yeah, it's um, the the world's still spinning. And uh, what I what I I've always been like a tough love guy. I'm always nice, always happy. And sometimes I'll be like, man, you know, like someone fucked up or like deal it as it is. And like sometimes when we will sit there with some of our investors and be like, look, this is what you said no to. And yep. sometimes we have to show people that just because that's what happens. Yep. And yeah. What, um, what do you see as the biggest opportunity for investors in the next 12 months? Uh, access, access to, to funds. You know, I, I see the, the, the lending easing uh, come the early part of next year. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like right now is, is, is the biggest opportunity because come that time and when the floodgates open again, yeah. it's almost gonna be, it won't, it won't be too late, but, but you know, somewhat the horse may have bolted in terms of picking up great deals that we're seeing today. They're not gonna, they're not gonna last forever. They're not gonna hang around until lending opens up. Yeah. So the biggest opportunity I see is, is, uh, is taking action, <laughs> is, is, is acting on, on things today and, and uh, it's sort of yeah. like a time back in um, the the time that I relate where we are right now, which is probably like the 2010, 2009 to 2011 sort of mm. time frame, mm. uh, where there was a lot of also the coming off the back of the the GFC and a lot of money printing, but nothing. nothing. I just can't stop laughing <laughs> when I think about how much money that they're printing nowadays and throwing at this problem. So mm. yes, there is financial problems out there. I knew there was financial problems years yeah. ago and uh, the level of money that they threw and what came from the back of that and we're really we're seeing that with lack of stock 
already. Mm -hmm. And when you throw more fire on this and go, well, everyone can just get money and it's easy and here's free money, free money for you, free money for you. Like, I don't even like this chick, but like, you know, Oprah was like, you get a free car, you get a free car. <laughs> <laughs> so come and give it out houses. How fun is this? Um, cool. And um, yeah, well, Pat, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. And Pleasure. I know that um, your, your investors, they love you. They love, you know. Uh, your, your support and the extra mile that you go and yeah so thanks. good stuff peace out <laughs> ready to go home <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming back and uh, that brings me to who's up next we've got Aaron I feel so overdressed uh, Pat wasn't wearing a tie and Jeremy yeah. looked really relaxed in what he's wearing Jeremy always looks relaxed Aaron. <laughs> Jeremy always looks relaxed so thanks for coming on Aaron Thank you. How do you feel being on Facebook Live? Nervous, not going to lie. Um, but, you know, it'll be... Yeah, you know, it's good to see it from this side. Normally I'm on the other side watching it, uh, so it's different. Yeah, it's cool. I see some of your some of your investors on here as well. So, I have, yeah. yeah, yeah. a few of us. So, with it, um, Aaron, tell me about yourself. Uh, I'm 31. I've got a couple of kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've met a couple of them as well. I have. I you have. have yeah, they, they are. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I've, I, yeah, I've just, I like sports. Um, yeah. What's your favourite sport? Uh, it's a tough one. Uh, there's a couple. So okay. there's motorsport. Okay. Um, like cars or bikes. Or? Cars, cars. Okay. Formula One. So okay. what they're doing with the whole COVID thing as well, you know, opening it up to the public now, yeah. especially in Italy. Uh, Italy was one of the worst affected. Uh, places and they allowed spectators to go in and check it all out, yeah, which wow. was great. Cool, cool. Being from West Sydney, a bit of drag racing. No, no I've been <laughs> to the drag surprisingly on a Wednesday night. Um, it's pretty cool to watch. But okay. cool. And what what are your hobbies? Uh, hobbies, um, yeah, I gym out the moment. You gym, know? yeah, yeah, as you're well aware. I um, started a gym the other day. Like everyone's been like, you know. I don't know. I bought it. I bought a gym set for home, so I've got like the dumbbells. Well, I have to come around to yours. I'll save yeah. some money now. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I just do it like the other night. Last night, I was doing it like um, one a.m. in the morning. It started, so I walked outside and started. I just got to sit in my yard. So send any emails uh, beforehand. I'll send oh, emails. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like the gym? What else? Any other hobbies? Um, besides that, um, yeah, I just like relaxing uh, actually that day when we went out for the drive and we checked out our investors properties around Sydney was pretty cool I, so I enjoyed checking out houses so Aaron's actually built the other side of the camera as well where he's been filming and uh, he filmed the, the last round of um, what were they they were like I don't know they were just like investment properties that a bit of update for the, the community and film some videos so Lisa says hi oh so, hey Lisa uh, <laughs> it's good to see you um, Cool, and so maybe <clears throat> a, a couple of like scenarios, which without mentioning anyone's names or anything like that, maybe a few scenarios of some properties of recent times, just to share with people, just some of the things that you're seeing out there and maybe some wins that you've been able to see recently for people. Well, yeah, absolutely. So um, once again, Jeremy took one of my ones, uh, the Botany one. Uh, so it's good to see my clients progress from pulling out the equity and purchasing a couple of more properties. Um, then there was the the Western Australian property. Um, yeah, let's not go there with the exact addresses for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she purchased the property for one thirty, and it got revowed a week later out two hundred. Wasn't uh, even a week. It was only about twenty four hours. Aaron. Oh, twenty four. I went straight week. over to the guys at Singer, our finance company, and we revalued it for two hundred. Two hundred grand. And she purchased it for one thirty. So she's purchasing a another property which is awesome so she'll be on six the six property six property and yeah. when did she come on oh it was february <laughs> so six properties in february right and apparently the sky's falling and everybody but, yeah, yeah yeah um so yeah th those are some pretty cool ones and then yeah i'll just keep learning and watching the numbers grow for my clients yeah. and making them help help them move forward yeah cool cool and what's your your highlight of the of the job, like, what's the, what do you what do you like? Is there um, anything you like? It's all right, we're on camera, everybody's watching. I feel, <laughs> yeah. Look, um, I enjoy 
All of it. Uh, the team around me it always pumps me up for the day. Uh, speaking to everyone as well and learning what their goals are over the next five years and trying to help them achieve that is probably the best part. Uh, this year, you know, I've had a few clients that just wanted to buy pro one property. I had one client that's purchased two properties uh, this year. Uh, he came with a small amount of funds and a primary residence and we managed to get him two properties. It, it took a couple of months, but we got there uh, through the refinancing side of things. This is the person I'm thinking of, because you mentioned beforehand, they bought a property that we need to go and talk to them because they bought a property that sold for 400 grand it's a townhouse, it was four years old, 400 grand, renting for 800 bucks a week. We picked it up for 90 grand or 91 grand, and it's renting for 200 bucks a week. Is that the person? Yeah, yes, that's yeah, the person, just, yeah. yep. yep. <clears throat> um, they're selling for like 160 now, and that's only been like two months, so. That, yeah. That'll be very good for him. Yeah, it's always good. It's always good. Um, cool, and what's like your biggest objections and? Um, yeah, look. Uh, the biggest objection at the moment is that they want to wait for the property market to drop. Uh, at the moment, <laughs> they do. It, it would be a nice <laughs> thing, but as we've said every week, we're actually losing a lot of properties to other buyers out there. They're offering a lot more, uh, and there was one property that, well, there has been a couple of properties recently that the owner is taking them off the market because they're noticing the trend pick up again. Mm. So that's always a good sign if you're an owner. Uh, it, so it doesn't matter how many how many properties I own, Aaron. Like I want the market to crash still as well because, you know, then I can go pick up more on the cheap. So that's that's the thing. But cool. And um, any other notes or anything you want to share or anything you're thinking or anything? Uh, not on the top of my head, no. Um, okay. So yeah, that's um, cool. Me. It was great to meet everyone too. I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Lisa, I will definitely be talking to you soon. Aaron, thank you. You're always no. such a gentleman and everybody loves you. And um, and yeah, like it's uh, your your enthusiasm goes afar because like people, <laughs> you go out of your way constantly to, uh, to, to, to try and you know, make things happen and weekends and it doesn't matter what time of the day, if you have to go to see someone with a contract or whatever you do what it takes. So that, thank you. That was a good experience. Thank you, Nathan, for being on. Thank you, Aaron. And then finally, we have got our last guest. The best to last. Best to last. Yeah. You've come a long way to be here. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> England or the Eastern Subs? Oh, both. Both of them are quite both. equally, equally yeah. far, yeah? Yeah. Well, cool. it's strange, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a bit different. intense. Is it's, it? It's quite intense, yeah. It's just a chat. It's just a chat. Right. Yeah, it's the light, I think. <laughs> That's it's uh, it's a light around the Instagram video. So mm. yeah, but um, I like the I like the wider light, but it blinds you when you look at it. So it's all that is quite blinding. To be, yeah. yeah, it gets I feel worse. Like I'm, yeah, like rings everywhere. Else <laughs> I look. So I'm just gonna. Yeah. That's all right. We don't have to look at the camera. I want. I want. It's fine. So this is Gemma, and uh, Gemma is one of our investor relations managers. And uh, tell me where are you from, in case anyone doesn't realise where you're from. In case you haven't guessed, it's from the UK. Okay. Um, so you got, so that's why she was sneaking around beforehand when uh, when I was talking about Mr. Dumb and Dumber. So. <laughs> I have, yes, there is. Um, We're not on the video in uh, oh, on the damn, I was trying to squeeze out. <laughs> um, no, there is something very wrong in the world when you've got Boris Johnson and Trump. They look like they could be brothers or something. Yes, it's there's something going going on there, and yeah. he is thick as pig. Yeah. yeah. That I was thinking about that Epstein, the guy that didn't kill himself. <laughs> his ears and his face look eerily similar to Barack Obama. Okay. Just have a look at their heads. They look like they're the same out of the same mold. Like I'm not alleging anything. But, you know, it's just weird that, like, you know, they look like they're out of the same mold. You've got Trump Well, they do. I just them. think they could both just, I think Trump's brushing his hair too much and Boris just needs to brush he his needs hair. He needs to brush his just hair, brush yeah. his hair yeah, and it'd yeah. be fine. Yeah, but, um, wow. Yeah, so I'm from the UK. I've been travelling. Um, Europe, South Africa, a um, little bit of Asia, landed in Australia. Um, yeah, I've done half of it okay. and this half of this half and ended up here with you. Yeah, wow. I still remember our first day. We'll get onto that later. <laughs> we'll embarrass it. But, um, but yeah, so, and you, 
Um, you went to, to you went away on the weekend to um, where'd you go? Byron, Byron Bay. That, I've tried to cover it, but I've got sunburn. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. this, this yeah. red hair and ginger skin <laughs> did, did nothing for me. Um, but yeah, no, I like to travel, like volunteering in um, cool. South Africa. I, um, I'm a dance teacher in South Africa. A dance teacher? I never yes. knew that. Okay, mm. cool. Awesome, awesome. So Gemma's first day, I walked in and we've got a whiteboard over here in our boardroom and uh, I was drawing a few things and I was telling her how everything sort of worked and I said I would bought a property for like 50 grand and one for 16 <laughs> grand myself <laughs> <laughs> and she blurted it out blurted it out and she goes bullshit you're a liar <laughs> I no I said I don't want to call my new boss a liar but I think you're full of shit <laughs> that was it that was it and yeah <sighs> and I then, know no it was funny. It was funny. It still is funny. Yeah, but I didn't actually know you that well, and that yeah. could have gone one or two ways. Yeah, lucky. Well, I took the risk and it worked. Lucky you've got like you know good sense of humour. You know, it's true. It's with true. Some other people with good sense of humour. Well, no, it is like to anybody to say what you do. Yeah. And when you are talking about everything that we do do, and I'm speaking to friends, or family, mm-hmm. uh, even my partner, it's like, no, nah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> And then they go and tell people, and like, nah, 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 that he's a scammer, he's going to do this. I'm like, nah, but I'm watching it. I'm watching everything that's happening. And like, yeah, I didn't believe it. I said he was full of shit, but and it's true. And how's that, how's that been, like, since you've been here? Like, what's, what sort of, like, what sort of um, things have you, you witnessed? And, yeah, like, success stories or people doing cool things? There's or? so many different success stories. Um, some are, like... They're still big, but they're little. Like, so without mentioning anyone's name, yes, you tell that, yeah. Um, so it can be someone that's come to us who had like 18k savings, yeah. and he already came to us quite defeated. He's like, look, I know I can't do anything. I know, da, da, da. and you know, I thought the same. But then yeah. after talking to him, you know, he'll be able to find something, and he's now. I think actually today his loan went unconditional. Everything was yeah. going ahead. Um, some people have watched us for 10 years, and now I finally pulled the trigger. Yeah. Um, and there's one. And one client as well, I think within two weeks, and these are quite rare, but in two weeks, he yeah. was like, ready to go, let's do it, and um, yeah, I accepted four properties within two weeks. Four properties. Which was cool. really, yeah. But yeah. It's, sometimes the success is just someone's changing their that someone's opened their eyes. Yeah, I get, I get the biggest kick still um, out of seeing people that come in, and I can feel like they're like, they, they're scared or they're like held back for something like they may have been had a bad experience in the past or something so it's screwed them up or they've been you know just things go wrong in life and they're like you know or their mindset of seeing a parent that got into trouble or their mindset about money and you know and seeing them overcome things it's like sometimes like the biggest amount of nurturing that I've had with our investors have been like you know I, at the end like seeing where they've come from and where they go to is like really cool so yeah, yeah. especially when and not to be disrespectful in any way, but when they're listening to uncles or neighbours or the friend's dog that's got one property or something, it's yeah. like, oh, but they said this is a bad idea. Yeah. Like, I know what they're saying, <laughs> but they've in three years they've got one property. You do what they do when you get what they've got. And yeah, yeah. And you, you listen to the people that you want to be like. Um, yeah. So that, you know, do you want to be like Nathan or do you want to have two, two properties in 12 months or yeah. 10 years sometimes? Yeah. Um, yeah, that can be, you know, quite. It's not <laughs> frustrating. It's just, it's sometimes quite sad for people not to, um, you know, I kind rem- of close the door on themselves. I remember when I first um, when I first started, like as a kid, I think it was a pain in the ass, like big time for my mum. Like, I feel like you would have been. Yeah, I just never listen. As an adult, I still don't. Like I don't, I don't have my face all covered up in a in a mask and, and whatnot. And yeah, uh, looking at. Um, you know, like taking no for an answer. Like I remember when I was younger, I was getting, um, you know, I had a girlfriend and a family and I had colleagues and stuff like that. And they were telling me like, you know, oh, don't buy these properties, you won't make money out in Western Sydney. Like, I, a lot of people think I grew up in Mount Druid, right? Which is, for those who don't know Mount Druid, it's like the sort of rough area of Western Sydney. I never grew up there, I bought my properties out there. Um, and I made my first million bucks in Mount Druid when I was 21. And I had everyone telling me I was going to go broke and you can't make money on these properties. And I could have listened to them mm-hmm. and I didn't. I was like, no. And what I realised over the years, I'll find them one day actually. I've got all these brochures when I first started the business and I did some renovation seminars and I used to do renos a lot. 
Um, my delicate hands that don't do too much work, they, <laughs> they did uh, some work. And um, I did these Renault seminars and I had people coming out, I hand out these brochures and all over them it said like, numbers don't lie, right? And uh, what I realized in the early days, and it's been years since I thought about it, is that people, like their emotions will lie, their opinions will lie, their, their, their friends, their family, their colleagues and whatnot can tell them their opinion, but the opinions don't pay the bills, right? It's the numbers, the numbers mm -hmm. don't lie. If you have clarity on where you're going to, then you know what vehicles you need to go in, and what times you need to hop in the what sort of vehicle. And yep. Yeah, so having clarity is probably the best way mm -hmm. around that. Definitely. Um, highlight of the job. There is a lot to yeah. them, which sounds quite cliched when people say they love the job and stuff. Um, I'd say one of them is when you when you're calling clients, existing clients that have done deals with us before, mm -hmm. and you know, you check up on them every three months and they mm -hmm. answer the call, hey, it's Gemma from being invested in like, hey, how are you doing? They're really excited, they don't know what's going what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um it could be a deal, it could be equity release, it could be anything. Um they you get call excited. them up and tell them that they've got free money. I know you said <laughs> we're on the house last week, but you got another twenty grand, another fifty grand going. Yeah, uh, so yeah. when they get excited it's it's good as well. Yeah. Um you know, building the relationships with people is always that's what I've always strived for in a career. Yeah. Um, you know, I do volunteer a lot with charities, so being able to actually eventually get paid to yeah. help people is quite good as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been <laughs> busting my balls for, for free for so long, so it's good to actually help people and get paid. Um, and I know that you, you, even like the little things that like, you've got like this like warmthly, motherly thing about you, like, oh wow, you got a little dog, right? I mean, like, like I, yeah, animals. I do know more about people's clients' dogs than their kids. Yeah, I well. do love my animals. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. So you, 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 what about your dogs? Like, you like dogs? You, what, 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 do we talk about the dogs at all? Or, what? Like, you, you used to like walk dogs? And, like, oh yeah, I used to be a dog walker. That was yeah. more of a passion job as a, as a backpacker. Yeah. But, um, that was great. And you like babysitting people's dogs or something? Like that? Yeah, yeah so I work for a, well I volunteer at a um, dog shelter. Yeah. A rescue. Um, and yeah, we take them home for weekends and give them a bubble bath and <laughs> steak dinners and they wow. sleep in the bed, partners on the sofa, like that's wow. how it goes. Okay. Um, but no, yeah, when clients tell me they've got kids, oh that's nice, how old are they? And then it's like, oh we've got a dog. I'm like, oh my god, what kind of dog is it? <laughs> um, we get really excited knowing people's lives and stuff. Um, and okay. to be honest, though, another thing is, I do feel quite privileged that people People follow you every week, they follow Birch Fiend. Yeah. And I literally see you every day. Yeah. And it is, it's nice to f actually have a boss that's not a dick. Okay, thank Do you. Do you mean? It, thank you. You know, you're doing quite well. Thank you. <laughs> you're quite nice. Um, but not, not like. This life's not to be called a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like, you know, actually working in an environment where it is genuine. Yeah. The person that's on the Birch, on Birch Feed, who's on Facebook, who's, you know, you're the same person. Um, and it is, it's just, it's just straight down the line. So it's, it's really, it's not a, it's really fast paced place to work, but it's actually quite soothing as well. Is it's it, like really exciting. Is it more fast paced than what you've ever worked really before? Or like, was it up there? Well, for anyone that has been to the UK and knows of the pubs called Weatherspoon, <laughs> it's not quite as fast paced as that. That was okay. like four deep at the bar and you know, okay, yeah, closing yeah. doors with your fee and pulling yeah. pints. But no, it, it's fast paced in the sense of, we're representing people, yeah. and it's not you're not working for yourself; you're working for them. So yeah. if something changes, you've got to move quick. You, you're doing it for them, not yourself. It's probably one of the biggest things, like over the years, that, that I've realised with the business is that that when it first started, it was a lot about like you know, here's this 25 year old, 25 coffee stuff like that. And then as the business grew, like we've got like 100 100 staff in the, in the business now, like we're national. Um, put an ad out there the other day, we've got looking for 15 more people to come and be a part of the team uh, from all different areas of, of the business. And it becomes bigger, it becomes bigger mm. than, like, I always joke to my mum, because she's like, didn't you retire to like, you know, not work so much? And it's like, yeah, but it's important, right? Like, and it's like, everyone's my boss. So it's like, that's cool. Like, I do no, things good. that I like doing and I like working with good people to achieve cool things. So I noticed, that Instagram is going to finish shortly, so we'll hop back on in a moment when Instagram finishes. I'm gonna try and wrap up in about the next 20 minutes or so. Um, I've got your questions that you're messaging through, so if you have 
uh, questions and you want me to have a look at them, feel free to send a, a text message through. Uh, the text message through to 0426 887 564. Um, and uh, I'll get the question shortly. Um, what's probably the hardest thing about the job? The hardest thing, I think, is when people can, when we can see what the clients can do. Yeah. But they're held back by fear. Our opinions, or whatever we were just talking about, that they, they don't take that that step. Yeah. Um, I know one thing Jeremy always says is that we're there to, when you're in the plane and you're going to jump out of the plane, you're going to do the skydive, and you're really excited, and you're like, uh, 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 no, I don't want to do it. We're yeah. there to kick you out. Um, which it is true, but of course we're not gonna. We can't force anyone to do anything. We can't force people to be successful. Yeah. Um, it does get disappointing when people could be so much more, could have so much more, or you know, live life on their own terms, and they decide ultimately they decide not to because they're held back by fear. And that, that's cool as well that people <coughs> that people do, you know, if they don't want to do stuff right, but then it's like I'll oh, just um, share this and set up a new one. Um, back for our friends at Instagram. Um, but yeah, it is, It is. you know, like, I always think about it like, well, we can't all have everyone retired and having no property, right? No work would ever get done in the world. We can't have everybody owning properties and owning 10 properties because if we didn't have tenants, we wouldn't have a consumer to our end product being our tenants. Mm, so true. it just depends. Like, we can't save everyone either, but yep. it's like, it, it becomes the personal, person sort of, um, you know, importance if they want to look after themselves or, or not mm -hmm. but um but yeah it's frustrating as well the people that do want to do stuff on the flip side if they you know they're ready to pull the trigger and they want to go um yeah. like said someone who accepted four in two weeks yeah but then you know finance or whatever reason you can't go ahead and that gets really it's i won't say painful that's a bit dramatic but you actually feel the the, the client's I disappointment. The, I know the person you're referring to. Yeah, and he might be watching here. I think he probably watches this. He's watch, he watches in the morning, I checked. Oh, I asked him morning. to come on and say hello to me. Oh, okay. But he's like, I'll watch you in the morning. <laughs> I know if you're watching this, <laughs> uh, whenever you're watching this, that she was very um, saddened for you that, that finance didn't work through. And you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, and especially in that person's situation, they were trying to buy four properties straight away um, and, and build that portfolio really aggressively. Um, however, it had to buy some properties cash, so we ended up purchasing two properties cash, and we're gonna come back and in the next sort of six months and be able to pull the equity back out and then go and buy another four. So it's not all you know, that they can't do anything. It's like, okay, what can we do today? And I often drive through Western Sydney and I get upset. I actually get upset when I drive through Western Sydney. This is like one of my little uh, sob stories here. Uh, I, I get upset when I drive through Western Sydney and I look at all the properties that I didn't do back in the day. And I remember there was one, I called a real estate agent and I was, I was like up to like property number seven or eight. And it was, it was around number seven actually. And I called the agent and um, I said to him, look, I'm gonna buy this property that you've got. It was a two story house. It was like 190 grand. It was worth like 230. I was gonna flip it just so I could make an extra 40 grand as a new deposit. And I had like 30 grand left over in my, um, in like a, a line of credit sort of account if I did that deal. And I said to him, if I don't sell it within three months, I'm going to go bankrupt. And I had a fear that I was going to go bankrupt. And I didn't do the deal. And it's probably worth about 700 now. And I would have just bought it and flipped it. But it was my opinion at the time. And I drive through the area and I think, I wish I should have a half acre here and a quarter acre there and all these properties that I wish I had. And I get upset, but I have to re remember that I did the best that I could on the day. Mm -hmm. right? And we can only do what we can on the day. So even though, you know, when you get upset that your investor that could have bought four, only bought two mm -hmm. that were like cash ones, um, but he'll be able to go and buy the other four later on. Yeah. It's, it's just, you can only do the best of what you can on the day. And finance has always been the biggest killer for me too. So, yeah. How did your, you say about decisions then? And what yeah. makes you so confident now in your decisions? Oh, repetition, it's like driving a car. Like I just know my parameters. I've been through some real shit times. <laughs> I've been through some real shit times in life. And uh, like, I actually feel like nowadays, like I'm so happy. Like even like, I wouldn't say like I'm like killing it and like going and buying a Bentley every month and stuff like that. I did once, so I spent like a quarter million bucks with the cars. I thought it was cool. 
didn't make me happy. Did you feel hard? Did you feel like you were... I was cool at the time, but I wouldn't do it again. I would just drive my truck around. Like, that's cool. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but my point being is that, um, you know, uh, knowing your parameters, sometimes I was actually having a, a, a map session with someone a week ago, and um, oh, he bought his first property with us today, actually. And... Um, he um, he said to me something about he lost some money or something. He said losing money was like the biggest education you can ever have, and sometimes mm. it it beats you up. And there's been times where like shit's gone wrong for me personally, and I like, never really property. I've never lost money on property. Mainly mm. fighting my way around in business world has been yeah. the, the biggest one. And um, sometimes it, it teaches you like your parameters. So some people get captioned by push down mm-hmm. from their parameters. And sometimes people go, okay, cool, now I know how far I can stretch it, let's stretch it a little bit further. Yeah. And uh, the four minute mile that we've done, where you know, everyone said it was impossible to run a mile in four minutes, and then it got beaten, and then everyone runs a mile in four minutes. So it's like mm. it's a psychological barrier of what's possible. And yeah. Well, that's good for the clients because one thing I would say to my clients is in all of your dealings, over 200 properties, and all the clients' properties, there's yeah. not you've walked that path so many times yeah. that there's not really unless you're really unfortunate yeah. not going to be a problem that an investor is going to have that you there's something similar you've dealt with or seen or come across or probably what's bigger than just like I always talk about like oh, I bought like 200 properties and I think it's about 210 that I have at the moment <coughs> and oh I was God, the I'm first time I've got an what? actual number what's that that's what you said then 10. Oh, but I'm always buying stuff. Like, yeah, but you always just say over 200. You never actually tell us. I never knew the answer. I never, I knew didn't the never look. I thought it was like a huge secret. I no, it's like not you, a secret. I feel like you've blown up the whole mystery of being invested now. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there you go. No, no. Like, on the weekend, I was like, I've got an offering on the property, actually, a new office. Not a big offering because we're growing our office, but I've got an offering in the office. So it could be another one. I just don't count them anymore. Like we're always going through, and I don't sell That's anything. That's quite disappointing. At the I thought it was a big, a big mystery. I thought it was just like a. Oh no! You never wanted anyone to know. No, I just don't count them. You just didn't answer my question when I asked you. Then you just like, yeah, no, well, I didn't think of the times so where I had like 195 or 202, and yeah, I just don't count them. Like I just don't look at them. People ask me how much silver and gold do I have. I don't consider a count each coin. I've got like bars <laughs> and ounces. I've got a stock take on my, you know, I have stock take lists and all that sort of stuff. And, what I have, but I never, I don't even know. I literally don't okay. even know. I've still, okay. I've still got stuff to count. So, Sorry, but well. I've bought maybe like 300, like I've sold off some properties over the years, not because I wanted to, it's just like I bought it with the purpose of flipping it straight away. And um, and um, what, what I, I guess from my experience, I get to see other people. So like, if I'm doing like map sessions and speaking to all these people over years, like the thousands, like tens of thousands of people I've spoken to, and I see their things, like when I see someone's map form, and I'm like, okay, like when, when you and the team bring in like people's files and I have a look at them before and review and do some markups in their position and try and draw a plan for them, um, I look at them like, okay, this person screwed up here, here, here. Like I can <laughs> tell because their advisor's given them the wrong thing, they've got wrong finance set up, they might have wrong accounting set up and stuff like that. I get to see from other people that have made mistakes. So I've never made a mistake from buying a glossy brochure off the plan scammy sort of property. Uh, but I see thousands of people that have. So I'm like, okay, I never want to go and make those mistakes as people. And yeah, like I guess that I'm blessed that I see lots of data as well in the market, like with real real-time data, like the amount of activity happening from the real estate agent's end, from the banking end, from our buyers end, all that sort of stuff, so, yeah. Cool. Gemma, thanking you for all that you do. I think it's been awesome. My pleasure. And you've got a big drive to go and have, so, Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks a lot for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. Any further notes for anyone, or? No, just, you know, keep your eyes open. Everything that you're saying every week, it's, that's one thing, Everything else that I've learned in the job, but being having my eyes forced open. Yeah. I came in, had no car insurance, I had no travel insurance. Travel in the world for like three years, no travel insurance. Um, and then I met with William. Yeah. And he was kind of like, you should really get insurance. I'm like, okay. I kind of like became an adult working. With I remember you, you did say that. You did say that one day. So. I think I referred to myself as fresh meat when I first. Well, that's, right. that's really bad yeah. if you say that in Australia. That no, like I know, I else. know. So there's lots of things that I say in English 
you know. That's what about, I said something else earlier on, and you were like, what's that? I said, he's going to click it. He's going to click it. If someone clicks it, she said, oh, is he going to click a pen? And I was like, no, <laughs> someone's going to click it. They're going to blow up and explode. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, there's, like, there's definitely a language barrier, especially with some of the clients as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the real Western Australian <laughs> accents. Yeah. Come well. with mine, but yes. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Hopefully Thank my you. clients are watching. I can say hello. But yes. They all love you and have good things to say. So thank you, Gemma. No worries. We will catch up with you later. Mm -hmm. So guys and girls, thanks for tuning in. And I've got lots of questions that you asked through. And, um, and um, yeah, questions through here. So I'm going to get to your answers, uh, get answers to you. Uh, I'm going to try not to stay on here for too long this evening. Um, because I was going to get home and I've got people waiting and um, yeah, just need to get on with a few things. So um, what do I have here? So um, <laughs> just uh, messages here, what have I got here? Um, So we've got a question come through. Someone is not working due to the scandemic um, out there, uh, looking to open up their business. Um, so I won't be able to get approved for a loan for a while. I have uh, 70 grand in offset. What we do with the funds, uh, buy a cheaper property um, or wait until the business builds up. No financial advice. So. Uh, obviously, I can never give financial advice because I'm not your financial advisor and I don't give financial advice. But what I do is uh, like to lead people to answer their own sort of questions. Um, so I guess there's many aspects to that. Have you explored every avenue? Do you think that you just can't buy anything now? Is there another way of how you can buy a property? There is a good potential that you could do something like that. Um, so there is a potential um, that you could buy. Maybe is it under a spouse's name? Is it under you know, a different structure? Um, you know, how is it you know, that you can get it? I know that there's people on JobKeeper out there getting loans. It's still fine to get a loan under JobKeeper and, and JobSeeker. I don't know so much about the JobSeeker, sorry, but the JobKeeper definitely. Um, <clears throat> if you were to put 100 grand, let's say that someone had 100 grand hypothetically, you could put 100 grand into your home loan and potentially save uh, 3%, that would be 3% return on your 100 grand, or you could go and purchase an asset um, that could potentially give you a 7 or 8% return. Uh, obviously, you need to look at the risk of purchasing that said asset, uh, but a lot of people often ask me, Nathan, would you uh, pay off your mortgages or would you go and buy a new asset? And my answer is that I'm constantly trying to accumulate and constantly trying to expand my asset position because from that, I can grow my cash flow, I can grow my net worth position. Um, and there's lots more opportunities from that perspective. If I had 100 grand to put into a new property, it's gonna give me seven or eight percent, that's seven or eight grand a year, or I could go and put the 100 grand in and uh, save myself two or three percent per year. I'd rather be expanding a new asset. That's my personal viewpoint and not financial advice on that front. Um, but definitely there's opportunities out there. I've bought properties this year for investors, um, anywhere from sort of 10 grand, the cheapest one's 10 grand for a block of land, um, up to like 50 grand for a unit, 60 grand for a unit, did one a day for 80 grand. And these things are renting out for like 15, 20% return. So there is still opportunities out there. Um, the, um, uh, uh, I like Jeremy, he is gold. Uh, <laughs> you should have him on more, he is, he is a character. Um, what do you think? Uh, what should you do when the bank says you've reached your maximum borrowed capacity and you want to buy more? Uh, good question. Uh, I've seen many times where people have been stuck with borrowing capacities and there's different things that you can do. Uh, one that comes to mind specifically is um, going back, I did a, a bulk deal maybe 12, 18 months ago. The properties were selling for, um, the, the properties were selling for, that they were valuing up, sorry, at 660,000. We picked them up for 560, so it was sort of yes or no to 100 grand uh, on the purchase of the property. And um, two of our investors out of the 10 couldn't get finance at the end. They were short about 150 grand uh, from lending. So what we ended up doing was purchasing some properties 
for uh, 50 grand. They rent it out for $250 per week. That $50,000 purchase, they purchased the property outright, and that 250 bucks a week was able to improve their cash flow position and enable them to service for the uh, the, the, the the property being 550 grand, 560 grand. So uh, you can use assets to improve your cash flow position for the banks to be, um, yeah, sort of uh, more lending to you. Um, uh, Hayden, he said, I wrote to Scamo and asked why bother announcing budget at all. They never have spending under control and always have to push the debt higher. Um, I guess it's all just a show. Uh, it's a show to make you feel like you've got a little bit of control. Um, our masters, our slave masters are there to give us a bit of uh, a bit of a show like it's happened throughout the millennium. You know, if you look back at those coins that I shared with you, those little denarius coins that came from the early... Uh, B, uh, AD, um, back in the day they had the, the, the Roman Empire and they had the Colosseum full of bread and water and wine and uh, people were able to, um, you know, party and, and feel like they have a level of control but at the end of the day they're all the slaves and the peasants. So, uh, Troy, has there been any more talk of stamp duty relief or it being abolished in Australia and does anyone know if it's each state that decides whether it can happen or if it's federal? Uh, haven't heard anything else about stamp duty, abolishing, abolishing stamp duty. Um, that is their biggest source of income, I believe, for the state. Uh, it is a, a scam uh, for the for, for people uh, of their, their, their income. Um, why would they be handing that away? Uh, I don't think we're going to see it happen like that. Um, but there could be a new tax raised, which would be like a, a levied one, which is going to be interesting. Um, a lot of people here with, with, with Jeremy, they, they love him. Um, uh, where has Jeremy been all this time? Everybody loves Jeremy. I'm gonna, I'll bring a show on just with Jeremy for you guys. Um, uh, cool, so what does Jeremy do in the business? Jeremy is one of my investor relations managers. Uh, the team that were here today were my investor relations managers. I've still got a few others. Uh, Kev, notably Kev, Kev isn't here uh, this evening, he's a bit ill. Um, he might be in the comments there somewhere watching from home. Um, and uh, a few of the other team aren't here this evening. Um, so I've got the property investment agents team which will do all the contracts and, and all the purchasing uh, you know, with my investors as well. Uh, I've got my finance team. This is, in, just in this office alone, uh, I think there's about 40 40 odd staff that we have here just in the head office here uh, in Bella Vista in Norwest in Sydney. So, um, yeah. Uh, so I will bring that if you if you guys want Jeremy back on. <laughs> if you guys want uh, Jeremy back on, just uh, let me know. Um, hey guys, I get idea of foundation portfolio. If you have an average wage, can you explain how it looks? Example, cash flowing property first and then capital growth property, property etc. Also, what do you think about and those that say you should only look inner and middle ring suburbs as opposed to other cheaper ones, thanks. Uh, Hugh, uh, and to answer your question, um, everybody's purchasing in their portfolio is, is different. Everybody's starting position is different. Everybody's strategy should be different. Um, so yeah, uh, it, 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 it's really important to have a tailored sort of approach as to what works best. Um, so what I mean by that is when building a foundation, do you need equity, do you need cash flow, do you need growth? What is the hurdles that you're going to come? So people might come to me with a hundred thousand dollars and say, "Hey, look, Nathan, um, can you help me build a portfolio?" And I say, "Okay, cool." I'll look at the hundred grand and go, "Okay, if they buy two properties for fifty grand deposit each, what sort of properties do they need?" Because once they buy those two properties, how do you get from number two, one and two, to three and four, five and six, six and seven, eight, nine, ten? Um, you need to look at what you're gonna need on your journey to get you closer to those goals. What is a bank going to require from you um, in terms of servicing, in terms of equity, in terms of capital, in order to keep purchasing, acquiring more assets. So, yeah, looking at um, what one would need, it would depend on where they're starting from, what they are lacking, do they have a high income, can they save a lot, do they have good cash flow, the bank servicing, do they have equity, do they have serviceability but no deposit, uh, everybody's position is different. So um, I always think about the type of property that I want to buy or need to buy has got to complement to get me to where I want to be. It's not about the property is purely just a, a vehicle on my 
chessboard of uh, investing and, and, and you know, getting me to where I want to be. So um, once you can realise the paradigm, the property is purely only a vehicle, it is not the destination. The destination is what's important. We need the right vehicle to get us to that destination. That's the key there. So, um, and what do I think about those who say that you should only look around the inner, inner and, uh, and middle ring suburbs opposed to cheaper areas? Um, as my team mentioned beforehand, you know, they talked some numbers that were pretty big, um, you know, half a mil, inner city, Sydney, blue chip sort of areas. Um, I buy properties in all different areas. To have just a sort of view of, you know, limited area, limited knowledge, right, that's, that's blinding yourself to the rest of the, the country, right? Uh, if you're making a hundred grand on a property in a Sydney, or if you're making a hundred grand on a property in the other side of the country, um, the reality it is is that you need to be focused on making that hundred grand. It's the outcome that you're looking for, not the you know the oh wow it must be inside to here. I know properties this year. I literally have purchased properties for people, and literally, and I don't mean just like oh we bought it so far below market. There are markets within Australia, and just be very clear on this, no matter which outlet or which video recording device you're watching this from, um, I have literally purchased uh, properties this year in 2020, which have gone up 100%, right? There are markets in Australia which have gone up 100% in 2020. And let me tell you, they're not within a city like you know 10K ring or 20K ring, they're on the outer areas of the city. So um, there are areas around Australia which have gone up 100% this year. Um, I don't even talk about these areas because I don't want people knowing where I'm buying. So yeah, um, that's, yeah. And Michael, Pat's the man, g'day Pat. Hey Aaron, uh, Aaron and Nathan, got my side hassle going now, I've been working a few weeks. Awesome, good to hear Nikki. Uh, Danielle, good to see you Aaron. Uh, shout out there for Aaron. Gemma, Gemma. Uh, here we go, We've got Pat. Pat's replying. As soon as Pat left here, he's replying to everybody. Here we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, forget the emoji. Uh, the hash. Um, where are we? Okay, don't want to but someone else. Sadly, a lot of employees think they don't work for anyone, but employees work for them. Uh, we've got Michelle from Queensland. I hope you're doing well, Michelle. I hope you're having a good start of the week. Uh, what deals are coming up? Nate, always deals that are coming up um, every day working on deals. Heaps of deals out there. So, um, yeah, I wrapped up four this afternoon, uh, which is cool. Um, all different locations around Australia and different sort of price ranges. Andrew, I regret selling my first build. Um, I regret all the properties that I sold, uh, but I've had to sell them for the um, for the the purpose of selling them at the time. Um, yes, you are blessed. I think I'm blessed, and um, yeah, it's a good time to be alive. It's awesome. Uh, David, uh, cheers, Nathan. I'm looking forward to the future working with you and your team. Awesome, David. Look forward to helping you kick ass with your goals. Uh, Lamar. Hope you're doing well, mate. Hope you're doing well. Um, cool. So on that, I'm going to um, answer some of the questions that got texted through uh, today. Um, so there's only about a half dozen, so hang in there with me. Uh, hey, I'm wondering if it's better putting all of your money into one house, say 20 to 30% deposit, than pulling equity out to buy an investment or use the 5% deposit scheme and use the rest of the money uh, for an investment. So, lots of variables, <laughs> lots of variables, Harry. Um, yeah, whether um, you should put in as a big deposit, pull it out, there's probably some tax implications there, some planning implications. If you'd like to get in contact with my team, um, here's just a little something out there for everybody. If you guys wanna have, like, uh, work out where to and, and how to get started and whatnot, um, there's, a, there's a few ways to be able to do that. One, you can book in for a map session with myself um, which I'll work, work through where you're at, a uh, bit of understanding on your portfolio, your position, and help you draw together a plan of attack to be able to reach your goals. So it's called a map session, that's with myself. There's a fee attached to that, that is 400 and 
$495 or $499. I don't know the exact price. I think it's $495 for the map session. Now, if you'd like to do a map session, you can contact my office on 1-300-367-925 or email us at admin at beinvested.com.au. However, um, if you'd like, you can speak to my team for free and have a discovery session. Um, I think there's a link in the um, in the Facebook uh, page here to book in for a free discovery session with one of my investor relation team. Uh, if you want to speak to Jeremy or speak to Gemma or Aaron or to Pat or to Kev or whoever you want to speak to here, um, yeah, you can book in for a free sort of 15 minute chat with them, explore what options there are, speak to my team. They're the guys that you know are working with investors on a day-to-day -day basis um, and yeah, work out what the best strategy is uh, for you. Um, I've just seen Lisa here. Hey Nathan, how's the price of silver going this week? Uh, it's come up a little bit. I think it's about 34 bucks an ounce. And uh, don't don't stress as well. Um, I have put an order. As soon as we uh, got off Facebook Live last week, uh, Lisa is our winner of our competition that we had. Um, the competition was uh, to, I think it was to put a review up and to join Birchfeed and put a review um, and talk about their story or what they've learned from you know, the community, whether it's from the videos I put out there, which were all free, whether it's from um, working with one of our teams or building a portfolio or whatnot. But it was a competition. Lisa won that competition. Um, after the Facebook Live, I was thinking, what? how would I give Lisa 10 ounces, right? 10 ounces of silver. Um, and, you know, it would be your first sort of silver acquisition, right? And I feel really blessed to be able to, you know, introduce you into a different sort of investment class to be able to say, here you go, here's some, some silver to start you off. And I was thinking, what sort of silver would I give you? And I've got this thing where when I purchase my own uh, like medals and stuff like that. I'm like giving it away because it's like it's like my little hobby. I like go and collect it and whatever. So it's like I'm giving away one of my children. So I went out and I purchased you 10 ounces. I actually bought nine ounces and I've got another one ounce to give to you. And I'm going to give you a bit of a collection of different types of, uh, of metals. And maybe if people want to see it uh, as a little unboxing, I can show everyone as to why I chose what sort of things. Uh, but they're all different sort of sizes and different types of pieces. Um, some bullion, some pneumostatic, um, to yeah, see what sort of um, you know, metals there are out there. So I have got that coming for you. Hopefully I'll get that in the, the next week or something like that. Um, yeah, so... Nathan, how do you decide whether you go for one expensive property or three cheap units? Uh, depending on what I need to achieve, uh, depending on what the property is going to do for me, that's how I make a decision as to what I'm actually going to do. Also got another question here, uh, virtually how are the fish in the dam going uh, and looking at going off grid? Um, I've got lots of places that are sort of set up off grid in all different ways, right? If there was a zombie, apoco uh, zombie apocalypse, uh, there's lots of ways where you know people could sort of hide and I could help people with. Um, but yeah, uh, my fish, I think I've got about 200 silver perch in my backyard. I've got a dam in my backyard. It's maybe about half an acre of, of dam, uh, if I had to guess. And um, that dam, I'll put in there about 200 um, silver perch and they're going all right. Um, and I've got a few thousand sort of a few hundred sorry yabbies as well that are in there so this was fun I always actually wanted to have a yabby farm uh, when I was a, a kid uh, my family had a, a fish shop so I had an aquarium and uh, I, I learned about money and whatnot from working in a fish shop so there's a, a fun fact today for me um, <laughs> once again Jerry needs to be back soon we'll, we'll bring Jeremy bring Jeremy back for you um, veggies and groceries have risen in the last three months during the scamdemic. They sure have. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy is the double gang of, of a Bob Down. I don't know who that is, but uh, I'll go check it out. Bob Down, I don't know who that is. Uh, hey, Nathan, when do you think and we'll go cashless completely? I believe this event will trigger a boom in Bitcoin value and want to seize the opportunity. Thanks. Um, I don't know when we'll go cashless. I think it will be a changeover. Uh, we're at a point where our currency is dying. Uh, maybe 2021 
Uh, I've got a feeling it will be soon. It won't be too soon. Uh, I don't think that Bitcoin is going to go through the roof. I don't. Well, I love Bitcoin. Uh, I have lots of it. I love cryptocurrencies. Get amongst it, right? And no financial advice to all the the sort of uh, regulators that love watching my videos and writing nice fan mail into me. But uh, I love crypto. Uh, but do I think that Bitcoin is going to skyrocket because of it? Do I think we're going to have a, a dollar that's backed via uh, Bitcoin? I don't see it. Um, I'd love to see it. Um, but I think that it will run as a parallel sort of uh, liquidity form. Uh, people that are smart will start using it and adopting it and using it as a storage storage wealth. And um, yeah, I think it can be a great beneficiary, but I don't think we're gonna be backed by anything to do with that. So that's just my personal thoughts. But yeah, uh, it will be good to see. It's a fun time to be alive because um, I'm certainly very heavily invested in the crypto market. Um, my dog, my dog, uh, my dog, the food, like, not my dog is the food, but my dog as the food. I don't have a dog. But, um, inflation, I used to be able to get a 12 pack for 12 bucks. Now a six pack is $8.50. The 12 pack had been discontinued and it's the only thing my dog will touch. Um, and this is the, uh, um, um, this is circulating in Victoria, noconfidence.com.au, I haven't opened noconfidence.com.au and I have a look at it. Um, wow, here we go. Um, and uh, this one is from, um, I don't know who it's from, but Powerade, $5.25 for a bottle of Powerade, right? You would be surprised that you would be at the Easter show trying to get it for that price. You believe that you'd be in some sort of concert or event, but there is none at the moment. And uh, Powerade at $5.25, what a good time to be alive, and it's only just starting. So if you um, are seeing inflation out there, if you're seeing things that are rising in value, uh, please write in to me throughout the week, send me a, a text message to this phone, I'll give you the number in a moment, so you've got a bit of a time to, to catch the number. Um, but yeah, if you are seeing inflation, um, yeah, flick us over a message, and I will have a look at it and share it with everyone next week. Um, here we go, I've got a question. I've seen this post here. Um, it's about um, some metal that was that was taken from an, a meth lab or something like that. Um, it, was, it was a police page. Um, uh, and it goes on to say, hi mate, I remember a question you got on your Tuesday Live asking what are the druggies going to do in a cashless society? Looks like crims are now trading in the precious metals too. Once upon a time, police were only reporting to seizing the drugs and cash from drug dealers. It's actually a very good point, right? So this here was on a, a page, I forget which page it was on, but it was shared here last week. Um, and they've seized like gold and silver and stuff. Soon they'll have USBs on there. We've stolen Bitcoin and stuff like that. So there's all different ways for you know security and, and having sound sort of currency outside of that dollar. So if you are fearful that you are, you do want to have a bit of savings. For me personally, I still have bit of cash right like having a bit of cash it's not that I'm completely out of it I have enough to sort of tie me over if I need to something happen I could be able to bail someone out or, 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 or do whatever but um, yeah hey Birchie you legend I'm confident that 99% of people watching your video know the hyperinflation that is coming however can you please elaborate on what comes after hyperinflation in the post one to five years. In your opinion, would it be wise to sell assets, gold, silver, property just before the hyperinflation ends? Thoughts? Uh, many cheers. Thanks, mate. Rob. Um, yeah, I haven't really looked into that to share with everyone. Um, I'm opening these messages live as, as, as uh, yeah, I don't open them up before the week, so I have them here ready uh, for you guys. Um, as for after the hyperinflation, I'm going to play it by ear. Uh, there will be a point where I will pay down my debt. One thing's for sure, I will pay down my debt. And, you know, I have a large investment in the debt market. I have instruments and books and whatnot which benefit, which are directly tied and correlated to a bank. Uh, there will be a point when I do dispose of some of my assets to a bank, um, some parts of my business which I will sell to a bank or financial institution, uh, but that's not at a point now. Um, I'll make it clear when I do that. Um, I will, there'll be a point where I will want to pay off my debt. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll just leave it there, but um, I will pay off my debt when 
the currency fails. Uh, will I sell off my gold and my silver and my cryptocurrencies or anything like that? I hope to hold on to them forever. I hope to be able to hand over metal and you know maybe even build instruments and businesses around said asset uh, to take to the other paradigm on the other side of the, the debt and death and lives of, of this system that we're in. So um, yeah, um, afterwards, after the, 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 the collapse of the currency, it will be interesting to see what comes. Um, what have we got here? Um, I think I'm out of questions for this week. Um, uh, <laughs> um, Virtue, how do you stay so humble when Martin North and Steve got you so wrong? It's all on film. I love the content. Well, that's really cool, right? So there are haters out there. These, these miserable, miserable, like when I say miserable, I mean they look like miserable people, right? And they have cut bits of my videos out and said, this guy is atrocious what he's saying. And they think they are some finance gurus out there. Um, and they have big followings and they're all just miserable people. Um, and yeah, how do I stay humble? I just know that I'm right. I know that these people will still be miserable and I'll still be doing what I'm doing. And if that's good, that's good. If they're happy, I wish them well. I don't wish anything bad upon them. But you know, they have their views. They're like, this is despicable. How dare this occur and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, I'm not one of them. Um, yeah, so. Um, uh, <laughs> we're still in lockdown in Melbourne. Would love to see a day in the life of Virtue and Jeremy at work. Beats Netflix. Anything beats Netflix. It's what it's like watching something from, uh, you know, back in the 1930s in in Germany or some sort of propaganda from uh, North Korea or one of those dictator countries. So, uh, Netflix is a scam in my opinion uh, looking at the propaganda that they're putting out there I don't like getting into certain topics there's some things that are very sensitive that I will keep completely off topic um, and not talk about uh, that generally involves bad things that bad people physically do to people um, and there is sort of sort of things that are being normalized in Netflix and sort of different agendas that look like they're being played via those platforms so on that note, guys, um, I've got one last question here. Virtue, are you a bacon and egg man or a sausage and egg? Um, I have, I generally have eggs with hash browns. Uh, I don't eat bacon and uh, yeah, I'm not, not a big morning person to eat sort of bacon and eggs or sausage and eggs or anything like that. But if I do, I'll have a roll with an egg and with a hash brown and barbecue sauce for that matter. So on that note, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you just before I close up uh, for this evening. One, thanks for watching and tuning in. Two, if you could share this video around, smash up the likes. Uh, if you do have any uh, questions or, or need help on your journey, whether it be from uh, speaking to my investor relations team to help you sort of build your portfolio out and do what you need to do, or whether it be speaking to one of my lawyers here speaking to an accountant, whether it be speaking to one of the finance team, uh, whether it be managing the assets for you and getting the highest rental returns, um, whatever it is, uh, feel free to reach out to my team, 1-300-367-925. You can email us at admin at uh, Free discovery session. Uh, if you'd like to have a chat with one of our team uh, to have a discovery session, uh, send a, a private message through to, uh, to wherever you're viewing this from. Um, or call us or send us an email to book in for a free discovery session. If you'd like a map session, they are booked out into the advance. Um, you need to book those things in. Speak to my team once again, 1300 367 925. A couple of uh, really important notes uh, just before everyone goes. Um, it is turning, it's coming close to Christmas. Right? If you are thinking of taking advantage of the markets, do understand this is a point of time when finance starts to wind down for the year. Um, if you are thinking of refinancing your properties or getting equity out, may as well set yourself up now and get that sorted so you're prepared. If you're thinking of purchasing properties uh, throughout the Christmas period, that's generally there's a lot of bargains out there. Uh, I love making deals over Christmas because there's people that are squeezed that need to get out or you know reach their goals for the year. So you know make sure that you set yourself up finance-wise. And finally, 
Uh, I have a webinar tomorrow night. Make sure you register. If you're not registered for the webinar, uh, I don't know how you would register for it, but reach out to my team, give them a call, uh, whatnot. It will be a live webinar. It'll be live streamed. Um, no doubt they'll record it and have it packaged up if you, get, if you register for it, but make sure you register for that. I'll be talking about financial planning, protecting your super fund, um, have some guests on with me to be able to talk about that and share that with you um, that are financial advisors. And, um, and finally, uh, a lot of people ask me about the budget still. Um, I only got a chance to briefly touch on that this evening. Uh, on, so tonight, doing Facebook Live. Tomorrow night, I'll be doing the webinar, which will be, um, I don't know how to get access to the webinar, but reach out to my team, they'll give you access to the webinar. Uh, it is live tomorrow at seven o'clock. And then on Thursday night at 6.30, I will be joining you uh, live on these platforms uh, with Ridwan Hannan, uh, Principal Accountant uh, from One Path Accountants, discussing with you guys uh, the results, our thoughts, we'll come to collect all our thoughts and, and, and notes from uh, tonight's budget, and we'll be sharing with you maybe a 20 minute, half an hour budget wrap up as to uh, what is to transpire from the budget results this evening. But what I can tell you is that I am so, so, so very excited to have a look at the budget, understand the budget. I'm like a kid, uh, you know, having to go to school when it's their birthday because uh, there's so much fun stuff uh, within inside that budget and we're going to see massive inflation. We're going to see this money get printed and we're going to see that money go into all different areas uh, of our economy. So I'm excited. We'll, uh, we'll catch up soon guys. Uh, keep being awesome. Uh, make sure to not be indoctrinated and, uh, and brainwashed by what's happening out there at the moment. Thanks guys and stay safe and if you need anything 1300 367 925 if you do like these videos Click us a Google review at the Be Invested Google review uh, page. Bye for now.